I started one of the weirdest businesses that no one ever knew about. Back in 2018 and 19, I was very early in the e-commerce world. Just like many people now, I started doing Amazon and drop shipping and learned a little bit of affiliate marketing, but really focused on trying to build a business in the e-commerce space. I started doing a lot of buying and reselling on Amazon and eBay and also tried building online drop shipping businesses. After learning Amazon FBA and drop shipping, I decided to kind of go that route, but that's not where things got weird just yet. Drop shipping was a popular business model for many, many years, and it really just started to get popular within the last three to five years. However, people have been drop shipping across many platforms for many, many years now. So I decided, what the heck, I'm going to start a drop shipping business to see if I could replace my job at the time or at least make some side income. If you don't know what a drop shipping business is, it's basically you are buying products from a supplier and selling it on another platform with you being the middleman and never handling any product. The reason this is so appealing to many people is the fact that you'll never have to store inventory. You don't have to pay for a warehouse and you don't have to buy all the product up front, which means this business costs very little money to get into. So someone who wanted to enter the e-commerce space, this is super fascinating and it definitely caught my attention. So what I did was I set up a store and I had to decide what type of products that I wanted to sell. And then you also have to decide what platform you want to sell on. The most common platforms that people use are Amazon, eBay and Shopify. All three of these platforms have their pros and cons. I decided to mess around mostly with Amazon. I liked Amazon because Amazon had free traffic. There are millions and millions of users every day and you didn't have to pay really any money to get started with marketing it. So the first thing I did was I started off just drop shipping products from using like Walmart, just selling general home good products and it worked a little bit, but then I found a niche that was super, super weird. So keep in mind, this is about five to seven years back. So if you try doing the same thing now, I think there are more restrictions in place to protect this type of niche. One of my hobbies that I had other than being very entrepreneurial was I liked fish keeping. So I wanted to figure out a way if I could start a brand and sell fish products or fish. But Amazon obviously does not let you just sell animals. What I found out is that I could create manual listings on Amazon and I could actually sell live fish. Now you could sell fish on eBay and pet stores do it all the time. You can order fish. It's a normal type of business. Like I mentioned before, with drop shipping, you don't want to hold inventory. I didn't want to be shipping out the fish. So what I did was I found a supplier in Florida. I would order fish from them and send them out to customers all through Amazon's listings. I basically created a seller profile, branded myself, and then manually put in listings on Amazon selling juvenile fish, which are basically baby fish. And this market was not tapped into at all. Like I said, you could go onto extra websites like Shopify and you could see people that had fish stores, but no one was selling fish on Amazon. But I did figure out why later on all this did come to an end. I had some very early success with it because the fish that I was selling was freshwater fish and I actually was selling popular fish based off what other YouTube hobbyists would keep. So I knew that a lot of people were searching for these type of fish on YouTube and I would go ahead and create listings for them on Amazon. Now this was crazy. I always remember when I had my first sale, Amazon sends you a little email that, hey, this is sold. You got to go ahead and deliver this product. And it was so weird, but I would buy it from the supplier who at the time just thought I was a regular customer. I would buy them and I would just send them to a different address. But here's where things started to fall apart. As I was doing really well with sales, I tried to sell more and more expensive fish. But the reason this did not work out very good in the end, because of Amazon's seller policies. We all know how good Amazon's return policy is, their customer service. You see, if you sell fish on your own, you can set up your own type of company policy. However, with Amazon, you have to stay with in Amazon's guidelines. If a customer had ordered a fish from me through Amazon, I would be responsible for delivering it. Now it wouldn't be two day shipping like Amazon Prime that everyone's familiar with. And there's no way of doing that unless you actually send product to a fulfillment center, which you can't send fish to a fulfillment center. All my shipping took a little bit longer, which was fine. But the problem was if the fish arrived dead, the customer would ask for a refund. And there was no way of protecting myself as the seller 
to prove whether the customer was right or wrong. You see, I can't just tell the customer, okay, ship the fish back to me and I'll send you out a new one. It doesn't work like that. So if the fish showed up dead on arrival, what I would do is I would have them send some pictures to me to show that it was actually dead. And then I would reach out to my supplier and say, hey, this fish that you had sent out actually was dead. Can I get a refund? And I would try and balance it like that. Obviously this all came to an end because as you start selling to more and more people, more and more fish started showing up dead. And there was no good way of protecting myself as a seller. So I did end up shutting everything down. But to this day, I have to say, this was the weirdest business that I had ever started. And it's just one of those things that I will always remember that I tried and people always find ways to find success in the marketplace. The way I would try and scale this business was I started with a couple popular fish. I would advertise them on Amazon. And then as those started selling, I would just list more and more fish that my supplier offered. You see, they had a big farm, but they would only do certain freshwater fish. So if I wanted to sell something else, I had to find a different supplier that I could order fish from. But hey, I gotta say it was a super interesting business. And to this day, Amazon never actually flagged me as selling live animals. And I still have my seller profile opened and every customer that I either sold to had their fish or they got a full refund if something happened to the fish during transport. So it was not something that I would be able to scale and really create a strong business just through Amazon's platform. So I went ahead and and shut all of it down. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you did please hit that like button subscribe and I will see you next Sunday. Peace.